Why is the Omicron COVID variant so scary? COVID-19 has ravaged the planet for quite some time now and completely changed many people's way of life. First recognized as a disease of international concern on January 30th of 2020, and then later declared a pandemic on March 11th of 2020, it's hard to believe that we have been living under this pandemic for almost two full years. During that time, it's estimated that over 261 million people in the world have contracted the virus and a staggering 5.2 million have lost their lives from it. It's also estimated that in 2020 alone, 225 million jobs were lost worldwide, with the pandemic having an adverse effect on businesses and the economy. With all of this out there, it's fair to say that COVID-19 has been one of the hardest times for humans in decades. Now, the bright side about all of this is that COVID-19 is in the back half of its career as a pandemic, and it's on its way out. Or at least, that's what most of us thought. As governments began rolling out the vaccines, optimism began to increase worldwide. The numbers of cases in countries where vaccines were being administered started to dip, and it looked like we were finally exiting this horrible disease. COVID-19 is a tough customer though, and some unforeseen variants have done their part in halting this process. It started with the Delta variant. More contagious and more deadly than the initial COVID virus, the Delta variant started sweeping through the planet, and although it didn't make vaccines obsolete by any means, it certainly did make them less successful. We met this challenge head on though, and after an initial spike in numbers have slowly started to bring the cases down. However, COVID wasn't finished, and it has now come out with what people believe to be the scariest COVID variant yet, Omicron. Where did Omicron come from? How contagious and deadly is this variant compared to the others? And what can we do to stop Omicron from once again ravaging the planet? These are all the things that we'll be covering in this video. So without further ado, it's time to take a look at why the Omicron variant is so scary. First off, the name Omicron originates from the Greek alphabet, which holds the same theme as the other names that the World Health Organization has given to the virus. Omicron was discovered earlier this month, and its first sighting was in Botswana in Southern Africa. The World Health Organization is so far pretty worried about this variant as they've labeled it as a variant of concern. The reason why people are worried about this variant, and more so than other variants in the past, Past is because of just how many mutations this variant reportedly carries with it. I'm going to quote an article here written by Amit Chattaverdi discussing the dangers of these mutations. He writes, According to health experts based in the UK, cited by Daily Mail, two of these mutations, R203K and G204R, help the virus replicate faster. Three of these mutations, H655Y, N679K, and P681H, help it to sneak into the body cells more easily, they said. The presence of the last two mutations together, a rare occurrence, also indicate Omicron is more resistant to vaccines. Basically folks, these mutations make it so that the vaccines that we've all been receiving no longer recognize the virus. This all has to do with the spike protein that's on the virus. The current vaccines that have been administered are meant to recognize the spike from older versions of COVID. The Omicron variant could have 32 different spike mutations which are all different from the ones our bodies have been trained to fight against. If the virus has mutated to have one of these spikes, then it will sneak past our bodily defenses completely undetected. Now I should note that vaccines aren't completely ineffective, but right now experts are saying the best case scenario is that they are 40% less effective than they were. That's a massive drop, and considering that's the best case scenario, it could be even worse than 40%. Not only is Omicron better at disguising itself to our vaccines, but this is also made doubly worse because this variant is simply more infectious to begin with. Researchers have found that this variant is missing a membrane protein that the other COVID variants have had. Apparently, the absence of this membrane protein just inherently makes this version of COVID more infectious to humans to begin with. Therefore, this virus is more transmissible, more infectious, and harder for our bodies to fight against. This is why scientists and COVID researchers are really scared of this variant and why the World Health Organization has labeled it a variant of concern. If it makes vaccines obsolete, then all of the progress that we've made over the past year seemingly goes down the drain, and it's as if we're starting back at square one again. 
Now I should state that nothing is concrete and we've only been aware of this variant for a very short time so researchers won't know for sure how infectious this virus can be until at least a few weeks monitoring it in the real world. This also sadly leaves us in the dark about its fatality rate as well though. Simply looking at the numbers I provided earlier about having 261 million people infected and 5.2 million deaths, we can do some quick math and discern that the fatality rate worldwide of COVID up to this point is right around 2%. Now whether this variant of COVID will be more than 2% or less than 2%, that data once again won't be known for at least 6 weeks of its circulation. Only then will we be able to make an accurate assumption of its fatality rate. However, so far from the cases that are being monitored, the symptoms seem to be fairly mild, which is a good sign. The South African doctor Angelique Kotsi, who first discovered this new variant, spoke to the BBC and has said that the symptoms are extremely mild. She went on to describe how it actually started with a male patient patient who's around the age of 33 and he said to me that he's just become extremely tired for the past few days and he's got these body aches and pains with a bit of a headache. She then goes on to say that the sore throat that this man had was also more of a scratchy throat, apparently less serious than some of the things we've seen with other variants. Her accounting of this situation has also been echoed by other South African doctors who've been treating people with this new variant. This is all very promising and could potentially mean that even though this variant is much more contagious, it's less deadly than the other ones that we've seen. I should also note that so far some classic COVID symptoms like the loss of taste or smell have not been reported with this variant. Once again, this is all very new and no expert claims to know the full implications this variant will have on fatality rates, but the milder symptoms are certainly welcome so far. The variant was only discovered a few days ago, but already many countries have taken action. The United States and Canada have already started to put travel restrictions on areas of southern Africa amid all of these new reports. Even though the bans are there though, that hasn't stopped Omicron from coming across the ocean. The first cases of the variant were found yesterday in Ontario in Ottawa. It was bound to happen, however people are concerned that it's already here. So far the United States has not recorded any cases of the variant, but experts believe that that's only a matter of time, and that all countries need to start preparing for the eventuality that Omicron will be a reality. All in all, the Omicron virus is so scary right now because it could take all of the work health experts have done and make it completely obsolete. If vaccines are obsolete, then this virus has the capability to push COVID numbers through the roof again. This will undoubtedly cause the hospitals to be far more overrun and more people to lose their jobs and their lives. We still have a lot to learn about this variant and more news will be coming out in the future weeks about how serious this variant is and what we can do to prevent it. For right now, experts advice remains the same. Get vaccinated if you haven't already and if you're eligible to get a booster shot, then do that as well. Wear a mask whenever you're out in public and limit your exposure to other people as best as you can. It's more of the same, but right now that's the best thing we can do to keep us all safe and to keep us healthy. Anyways guys, please let me know your thoughts about this whole Omicron variant down below and also I think one of the best things to keep all of our heads high right now is to picture the light at the end of the tunnel. So I would love to know in the comments down below what is the first thing that you're planning on doing the second that COVID is no longer a factor in our lives and this is all ancient history. History. Please let me know. Also make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I've been your host Nicholas Playlog. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. <music>